This morning we have our part three, our third talk on planning. Everyone here knows, but I'll just mention it because it's going on the video and it's a separate part. That in our calendar, this is Nartana Ratau, mid-April through mid-August, the best time of year for planning, planning ahead. And really have encouraged everyone to have a plan to cover the major aspects of their life and to plan ahead six years. So where are you going on pilgrimage in 2018? Should be in your six-year plan. <laughs> so planning ahead in the various major departments of life, spiritual, social, cultural, economic, educational, and health and physical six divisions of an individual's or a family's life to plan ahead in. We're looking at a sutra that he wrote in the Nandinada Sutras on planning. Shiva's devotees approach each enterprise with deliberate thoughtfulness and act only after careful consideration. They succeed in every undertaking by having a clear purpose, a wise plan, persistence, and push. So part one was clear purpose. Part two was wise plan. So obviously part three is persistence and push. We're going to combine them because push is very simple. We have two examples here of lack of persistence. The problem is someone has chronic back pain. They have a clear purpose. Let's get rid of or at least significantly reduce the back pain. Okay, so we have a clear purpose. They have a plan. They go to a physical therapist and he gives some exercises to do. The person does the exercises for a month and stops. Exercises are a lot of work, right? Then he goes to an Ayurvedic doctor. Same problem. The doctor suggests some herbs, so he manages to take the herbs. That's easier than exercise. He manages to take the herbs for two months. And then he kind of dwindles off on that. Six months later, he still has the problem, and he goes to another doctor and gets a still a different remedy. So oh, that's human nature. We tend to have a solution in front of us, but we don't stick to it. We don't implement it. We kind of lose interest and want to try another approach. But of course, we don't get the clear purpose. We don't get freedom from back pain if we follow that kind of jumping around. Another one is the In Hinduism, it happens, we get different major teachers, swamis, yogis coming to town. It doesn't happen much in quiet Kapa'a, but take any big city. And these days, there's a steady stream of teachers coming. So in our example, the, the sincere aspirant has the goal of making greater spiritual progress. That's the goal. That's the clear purpose. So what does he or she do? Goes to the Swami, gets a mantra, starts repeating it, and manages to stick to it for about two or three months and stops. A year later, a new teacher comes to town. This is exciting again. And teaches meditation, meditating on the inner light. So the person learns how to do that, practices it again for about two or three months, and then stops. So that happens all the time. Lack of persistence. We have a clear purpose. We have a wise plan. But we don't have persistence. We don't stick to the plan. We jump and want a new plan. If 
Human nature hasn't changed much since the Tirukkural was written some 2,000 years ago. So we can find all these qualities described right in the Tirukkural. <clears throat> it's chapter 62, Perseverance. One of the verses gives us an important perspective on perseverance. Beware of leaving any work undone, remembering that the world abandons those who abandon their work unfinished. The crawl chapter and all its verses put together states that perseverance creates prosperity, the ability to overcome misfortune, and to be generous and charitable. It also states lack of perseverance brings shame, abandonment, and misfortune. There's a short phrase, or Mahavakya from Gurudeva, that addresses this. He says, consistency is the key to the conquest of karma. So that's another way of saying the perseverance. We're consistent. We stick to our plan. We stick to our practice. We persevere. <clears throat> In Living with Shiva, Gurudeva talks about persistence and the challenge of Overcoming changeableness. This is what he says. Changeableness means indecision, not being decisive. How can we discriminate between this and the strength of a person who changes his or her mind in wisdom because of changes of circumstance? A person who is changeable is fickle and unsure of himself. Changing without purpose or reason. Persistence describes the mind that is willing to change for mature reasons based on new information, but holds steady to its determinations through thick and thin in the absence of such good reasons. Its decisions are based on wise discrimination. Having made a solid decision in the first place, only reconsider it in light of new information. That's a good distinction there. Changeableness is reconsidering it without any new information. Sometimes just for the novelty of coming up with a new plan. We've had this plan two or three months. Let's, let's find a new one. But there's no reason to if it's a good plan. But if new information comes, circumstances change, then the plan can change. And that's still perseverance. <clears throat> Maybe you've run into this one. In the Hindu world, sometimes it's thought we have a great plan, clear purpose, we're moving forward, and we hit some major obstacles. And it's interpreted, oh, Lord Ganesha is blocking the plan. We're not supposed to do it. So we stop just because we hit an obstacle. But just because we hit an obstacle doesn't mean necessarily, that we should abandon the plan. We have to analyze it more carefully. Maybe keep going, and if we hit another obstacle, and then we keep going, we hit a third obstacle. If we hit three obstacles, maybe that's good reason to abandon it. But we have to be careful. And one of the points I like to make, because Gurudeva brought it out in regards to Iravan Temple, is the larger a project, the more obstacles you should expect. So sometimes the problem is we're being unrealistic. How many obstacles have we encountered with Iravan Temple? Lots. <laughs> At one point, they changed the, the visa laws. They're actually rules, they're not laws, but they changed the visa rules, <clears throat> and we couldn't get any silpies. Did we give up? No, we got the best uh, visa attorney in the US in Washington DC to advise us and worked around it in a very nice way. So we didn't give up. Likewise, certain items didn't fit in putting them together. You joint them and they don't fit. Yogi Naswami didn't give up. He found creative ways to solve the problem because 
they're not used to carving in one country, shipping it halfway around the world, and assembling in another. They're used to carving and assembling it right in the same place, so you don't have these kinds of problems. Stones don't sit around for five, ten years after having been carved before they're joined. Therefore, when you create the clear purpose and the wise plan, make sure you're realistic in terms of the number of obstacles you think such a plan may encounter before you start. And then when they come up, you, you smile instead of getting discouraged. You say, oh, obstacle number one, here you are. It's been about three or four months since we started. That's about right. <laughs> you're not surprised. One more point, just a short one, push. Push in this context means willpower, persistence and push, the ability to push something through to accomplish it. And as you know, you've, many of you have heard my usual lack of push one. It's the student who wants to do well in school, has, has great resolve, and is going to get up early in the morning and study hard and sleeps right in, regularly. The resolve is there, but the power to accomplish the resolve isn't there. Willpower, the power to accomplish what you want, what you will, isn't there. Fortunately, willpower can be compared to a muscle. Muscles are very interesting. <clears throat> The more you use a muscle, the stronger it gets, right? Some things, when you use them, they go away. You have a jar of rice, you use it, you end up with an empty jar. Money, you have money in a bank account, you use it, the bank account ends up empty. But willpower is the opposite. The more you use it, the more you have. Just like the muscle, the more you exercise a muscle, the stronger it is, the more it can do. Therefore, we need to make sure we're adequately exercising our willpower. Unfortunately, we have many opportunities throughout the day. As Gurudeva gives a very clear guideline, he says, to strengthen willpower, you need to do two things. Finish every job you start and do it to the best of your ability and even a little better that's challenging your willpower. You don't start something and drop it in the middle. Make sure you finish it and you do a good job, a little better than you have to even, because that encourages you to do a little more. Use that willpower, it's like one more push-up. Use that willpower just a little more than you have to, and it strengthens it. Well, that's the last item for success, so we'll read our Sutra, one more time in conclusion. Jiva's devotees approach each enterprise with deliberate thoughtfulness and act only after careful consideration. They succeed in every undertaking by having a clear purpose, a wise plan, persistence, and push. Thank you very much. Have a great day.